In the previous episode, I showed you how beautiful the legendary Mahabodhi temple looks at night in the dark. If you haven't watched this video yet, I highly recommend you to do so by clicking on the i button that is coming up on the right hand side top of your screen. In today's video, we will be taking a look all around this temple complex in broad daylight and experience the beauty and the holiness of the Mahabodhi temple. So let's get started without any further delay. So right now I am here at the Mahabodhi temple in Bodh Gaya, the place where Lord Buddha attained his enlightenment. It was made by the great emperor Ashoka and here is your first look at this magnificent place. Now let's go inside and do some rituals. The Mahabodhi temple complex was the first temple built by Emperor Ashoka in the 3rd century. It was one of the oldest brick temples in India. It was during the ruling of the Gupta Empire that the construction commenced. Being the main temple, it has a classic Indian architectural style with motifs and layers. The main shrine faces eastwards and this is where the golden plated statue is placed. The temple wall has a height of 11 meters built in Indian architectural style. The temple itself is 55 meters in height or 180 feet above the ground. Its pyramid tower comprises several layers of motifs and engravings with four towers each identical to the central counterpart and topped with an umbrella-like dome. After the construction of the temple, there was a dilemma on where to place the statue. A man came who said who would do the work perfectly in six months. He asked for scented clay with a lamp that would be placed inside the temple and the temple doors would be locked for six months. Everything was done as per his wish. However, curiosity got the better of people and they opened the door four days before the six months ended. They found a perfect statue and the only thing that wasn't done was a small part of the chest. Donating a robe is seen as one of the most holy donations that a Buddhist can do. The Buddha himself established a procedure for giving and receiving cloth to make robes. In the month following the end of Vasa, gifts of cloth may be given to a Sangha or community of monastics, but not to individual monks or nuns. Usually two monks are designated to accept cloth for the entire Sangha. The cloth must be given freely and spontaneously. Monastics may not ask for cloth or even hint that they could use some. In those days, making a robe required spreading the cloth on a frame called a kathina. The word literally means hard and it also connotes stability and durability. So kathina is not just about cloth, it is also about firm commitment to a monastic life. Therefore, you can see us donating a robe for Buddha, which is a very holy practice.
So right now I am standing at the place where the Bodhi tree is located, the very place where Lord Buddha attained his enlightenment. It is said that in this place there was a lotus pond near the Bodhi tree. The path running around the pond had many stone lotus carved. It is said that Lord Buddha spent seven weeks of his life meditating in this region by walking 18 steps front and back. The stone lotuses got an imprint of the Buddha. The footprint only reminds people that Buddha was on earth and left a spiritual path to be followed. So the Mahabodhi temple which was created by King Ashoka the Great is recognized by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site. In June 2002, the Mahabodhi temple complex was declared to be a UNESCO World Heritage Site. A report on the state conservation was submitted to the state party to protect the property at the Bihar state level. After a meeting, the integration of relevant provisions of site management plan shows the temple complex was declared to be under UNESCO. There were advisory bodies and planning management teams. This led to the legal protection of all its religious artifacts since the year 2002. Once it so happened that the earth darkened for seven days after Buddha began meditating under the Bodhi tree. This led to a staggering amount of rain and the king of serpents Lucinda came out of the lake to protect Buddha with his head held like an umbrella. Since then, the lake was named after the king himself, Musalinda. This is also called the lotus spot and it has one of the most beautiful sceneries in the entire temple complex. The contribution and relevance of the Mahabodhi temple is indeed great. It marks the most important event in the life of Lord Buddha, his enlightenment. Various sites in the complex like the Bodhi tree have only strengthened the regime of Buddhism. It has shown the right path to Buddhists from all over the world and has shaped their doctrines. Furthermore, it has also become a major tourist attraction for many different people. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. 
Stay tuned for another episode of Bodh Gaya where we will be exploring some of the older and ancient spots related to the story of Lord Buddha. Till then, stay happy and stay healthy.